ladies and gentlemen, if you could please make your way to, uh, to a seat, we'll get underway. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're glad you could come out this evening, this afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Surrey Central City for this year's meeting, and uh, I'll get on with the AGM in a few moments. Uh, my name is uh, Bill Welburn, and I am the chair for the meeting. Uh, we have a number of, of special guests here this afternoon, and I'll introduce them after I call the meeting to order. It's uh, a tradition at Coast that we, we move uh, the location of the annual general meeting uh, throughout our three trade uh, areas, uh, those being Richmond, uh, Surrey, and the island, and we're pleased this year to have it uh, here in Surrey. Uh, we are located in the uh, Central City Building, and uh, many of you probably know that this is a, an international award-winning building uh, designed by Bing Tom Architects. It's the tallest building in Surrey, and it's a landmark that you can see from miles and miles away. Uh, Simon Fraser University has a campus here. Uh, Coast Capital Savings has a branch here, and we also have administrative offices on uh, a number of the floors in the tower. Uh, I just thought I would share with you some of the uh, some highlights of Surrey. Uh, we, we went to the archives and we found these these old shots and. The one on the left, uh, you can see King, King George Highway, and on the left with the arrows pointing down is the, the future site of uh, what was then called Surrey Place Mall. And uh, the picture on the right, you can see the, uh, the original uh, Surrey Place Mall, uh, and, and an arrow indicates where, where this building was erected. The, the building in the middle is called the Roundup Cafe, and I'm told that that, uh, that opened for business in 1959 and continues in business to this day. Uh, if you go to, uh, to the uh, Cloverdale area of Surrey, you will find uh, a, a branch of Coast Capital Savings, and you'll find branches of Coast Capital Savings throughout Surrey. But uh, Surrey is, is uh, or Cloverdale is where Surrey Credit Union first uh, established itself, and that was back in uh, 1947. Uh, Forty-one members uh, joined the credit union and established it as uh, one of BC's early credit unions. Uh, the building uh, to the right uh, is the old uh, city hall built in 1912. Uh, after it serving its life as city hall, it became uh, offices for the RCMP and, and uh, along with justice facilities. It then became the, uh, the Cloverdale Library and then a senior center, and now it's the Surrey Archives still standing. And it's interesting seeing number 10 road uh, as it was back uh, just about 100 years ago, I guess. And moving forward to, uh, to Surrey today, and this, this actually captures not only Surrey today, but Surrey in the future. Uh, you can see there's a, a couple of shots of Holland Park there. You can see the blue tents, I hope. Uh, those are Coast Capital tents where we're taking part in a community event. Uh, this, the, the building in the top middle, uh, that one is uh, the proposed uh, new uh, st uh, city hall for Surrey. Uh, interesting to note that in uh, 2010, last year, uh, one-third of all of the housing growth in Metro Vancouver uh, took place here in Surrey. And uh, it's expected by 2015 that 10% of British Columbians will live here in Surrey. Uh, we at Coast see this as an exciting time for Surrey, and we're happy to be very active and a part of this community. And when you think back to our founders who established the old Surrey Credit Union back in 1947, I doubt they imagined, or maybe they did, that uh, one year uh, Surrey Credit Union would become part of, uh, of a much larger organization that uh, has assets in the billions of dollars and makes uh, an income in the, in the millions of dollars and now has over 450,000 members. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get on uh, with the meeting. Um, I'll call the 2011 Annual General Meeting of Coast Capital Savings to order. And thank you again for being here this evening. I'm uh, pleased you could join and, uh, us and to hear about Coast Capital Savings and our activities for the past year. Uh, in a few moments, I'll review how you can uh, participate in the meeting. Uh, the agenda packages were available at, uh, at uh, sign-in, so I, I, I hope you've all got one. If not, we can get one to you. Um, our rules uh, require that members be notified of a general meeting, and advance notice of this meeting was first provided in November 2010 as part of the annual call for candidates for the uh, uh, director's election. 
Uh, this notice was mailed to all members in October and November. Uh, Coast rules require that a minimum of 50 members in good standing constitute a, a quorum uh, based on the preliminary registration information I announced that we're in compliance and I'll give you the actual count when it's available. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the meeting is, is constituted for the transaction of business. Uh, we'll leave the registration desk open for a few more moments for, for late registrants. I understand there's people in transit and are late because of uh, traffic. Uh, moving on to agenda item number four, uh, the rules of order are in the registration package and I'll just review uh, some of the, the key points. Uh, rule number 17 says that uh, members must be recognized by the chair before speaking and must clearly state their name and branch affiliation. Uh, number 18, only one member shall have the floor at any one time. If two or more members wish to speak at the same time, uh, the chair will determine the speaking order. Number 19, discussion on motions or resolutions is limited to three minutes per member, except the mover may speak a second time to close debate. Uh, the reason for the time limitation is to permit all those who wish to speak an opportunity to do so. Uh, number 20, our recording secretary will act as the timekeeper. Number 21, the deba debate shall be relevant to the particular motion that is being discussed. And as far as voting is concerned, number four says uh, each member here tonight who is age 19 or over is entitled to one vote. And uh, number five, voting will be done by show of hands uh, using the orange registration packages or as otherwise determined by the chair. Uh, are there any questions on the rules of order? May I have a motion then to approve the rules? Raise a hand second, please. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. Now, um, the agenda uh, is it, in your package. Uh, first of all, we'll just review it uh, briefly. We'll, we'll deal with the required appointments for the meeting and some introductions, and then I'll present the, uh, the Board of Directors report. This will be followed by a report from our Chief Executive Officer, Tracy Reddys. Uh, the meeting will receive the 2010 Auditor's Report and the 2010 Audited Financial Statements, followed by the appointment of external auditors for uh, 2011. Under item number 12, uh, Glenn Wong, Chair of the Nominations Committee, will report on the Director of Nominations and Recruitment Process and the results of this year's election. Closing remarks will follow and the business meeting is scheduled to conclude at approximately 6 p.m. followed by the members open forum. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? I just need to see a hand. Thank you. Second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, agenda item number five, uh, appointment of Parliamentarian and Recording Secretary. I appoint uh, Lisa Skaken, General Counsel of Coast Capital Savings, our Parliamentarian for this meeting. And I appoint Linda Taylor, Secretary to the Board, our Recording Secretary for the meeting. Uh, I will also appoint uh, Jerry Delamatia as our Retreating Officer for this evening. And uh, once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for, for being here. Uh, we want your uh, participation in the meeting and in order to make this happen most effectively we have two volunteers uh, and they'll appear in each aisle and each volunteer will have a, a microphone in hand and uh, when you wish to speak please approach one of those individuals and uh, I'll recognize you and ask for your name and your branch affiliation. Uh, webcast uh, participants can submit questions during the meeting in the space that's provided uh, below the video player and we'll include them with uh, your comments and questions during the members' open forum portion of the meeting. I'd now like to introduce the head table and our guests. Uh, working from my left, we have our Chief Executive Officer, Tracy Reddys. Uh, next to Tracy is uh, our Parliamentarian, Lisa uh, Skaken, and uh, uh, at the end is Linda Taylor, our Recording Secretary. Now, guests in attendance uh, this evening uh, from our audit firm, or your audit firm, KPMG, we have Dave Gillian. Uh, from Cumas, we have uh, Brad Jepson. Uh, Boys and Girls Club of South Coast BC, Carolyn Tuckwell. Boys and Girls Club Services of Greater Victoria, Patty Sullivan. Uh, from the Quantlin Foundation, Jeff Norris. We have uh, Jeff Holm here, a, a director at Interior Savings. We have uh, Paul Skelhorn, first, uh, from First West Credit Union. 
Uh, Jerry Delamatia, uh, our returning officer, is here, and Steve Tapp from Cumis, and Angela Kaiser, the uh, board chair at Prospera Credit Union. Uh, thank you, guests, for attending. We uh, appreciate your interest in Coast. Uh, agenda item number six are the minutes of our last AGM had held uh, April the 28th, 2010. The minutes are in your package uh, for your information. On June 21st, 2010, the board reviewed and approved the minutes of last year's AGM. Uh, the minutes are now being presented for your information and to confirm that there are no errors or omissions. Uh, may I have a motion to accept the minutes, please? Thank you. A seconder? Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, agenda item number seven, the business arising. Is there any business arising out of the minutes? Okay, we'll move on to agenda item number eight, which is the report from the Board of Directors. Uh, if you have any questions on the board report or the reports that follow, please make uh, note of them. We have a lot of interesting information for you this evening, and questions that come to mind may be answered as we proceed through the reports. Before we move to new business, uh, there will be an opportunity for you to ask any questions uh, that may, uh, you may have on any of the reports provided to you this afternoon. Well, at least uh, I'd just like to talk a bit about uh, some of the, the uh, uh, activities of the coast of, at Coast this past year. Um, I'm going to introduce the, uh, the Board of Directors. If I had a clicker, I, there we go. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about Coast and the community. Uh, Tracy is, is going to talk about the financial results, so I won't get into that. I'm going to talk briefly about our plans for expansion. And uh, I'm going to uh, look beyond the numbers at uh, some of the, uh, the key executives here at Coast and introduce them to you. Um, the Board of Directors, there's 10 of us all together. I have nine colleagues on the board. Our governance committee um, works uh, diligently at determining the competencies that we require on the Board of Directors to oversee Coast and to uh, approve the strategy as we move forward. The competencies that we look for include a, a variety of things. Uh, it includes executive leadership, uh, it includes knowledge of, of governance, uh, banking, uh, accounting and audit, insurance, legal, uh, sales and marketing, human resources, risk management, strategy, uh, technology, uh, corporate social responsibility, real estate, to name some of them. Um, the individuals that you see on the screen uh, possess but between them, amongst them, uh, these skills. And just to uh, review these individuals, first we have uh, uh, Dan Burns. Uh, Dan is uh, chair of our governance committee. Uh, next to Dan is Bill Cook. Uh, Bill is chair of our risk review committee. Uh, Christian Finley, and along the second row, uh, Doug uh, Brownridge and Mary Jordan. Mary's chair of our uh, human resources committee. Karen Kestelo is chair of our audit and finance committee. And on the lower row, uh, Gail Stevens, uh, Doug Stone, Doug is chair of our conduct review committee, and uh, Glenn Wong is chair of our nominations committee. I, I asked staff to include the, uh, the dates that these individuals uh, were first elected to the board, and you can note that uh, those dates are relatively current in most cases. Uh, there's been a, a lot of transition on the Coast Board over the past number of years as we've sought to achieve the competencies that, uh, that we require on the board. So uh, I, I, I just put it to you, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the work that we've done, uh, the nominations committee has done in particular in sourcing out candidates for election to the board has been quite uh, exemplary. Uh, now I'll move on to uh, our community investment uh, uh, highlights. We have a, a brochure which you can see uh, online. Uh, at, at Coast, we appreciate the importance of communities uh, where our members and, and employees and, uh, live and work. Uh, in, in 2010, uh, Coast invested $4.6 million in community programs, and we're, we're proud to be playing this important part in the community. And in particular, one of the projects uh, we've supported or are supporting this year, this year and, and over the next couple of years is here in Surrey. Uh, the uh, Surrey Memorial Hospital um, opened uh, its doors first in 1959 as a 100-bed community hospital, and at that time it was serving about 75,000 people. 
Today, uh, Surrey Memorial Hospital is the second largest hospital in the province, and it serves a regional population uh, close to uh, 600,000. In March of this year, the Surrey Memorial Hospital Foundation kicked off what's described or what's called the 100 Days uh, to Give campaign, and the purpose of is, is to match a $5 million gift uh, by uh, Jim, uh, Jim Pattison. Uh, Coast is uh, very pleased that it has committed $500,000 uh, to this uh, project. It's an outpatient care and surgery center, and it's going to be opening in a couple of months' time. Uh, at Coast, we're working on a, on a newer uh, community leadership strategy. We, we see our, our role in the community as both a responsibility and an opportunity. And the promise that uh, we are making is on the screen uh, that's uh, before you, and it's to help build a richer future for youth in our communities. And by youth, uh, we're, we're targeting an audience, a youth audience ages 13 to 24 years old, and a secondary audience of children ages 6 to 12. Uh, this group of youth uh, have been ident identified by expert as a key development period, and with COAST focusing on this area, it will make our communities stronger. We want to be known as the local community builders and plan to engage and involve our members with the strategy. A couple of programs that are longstanding at Coast that already focus on youth uh, include our educational awards program. And this is the largest uh, private sector program in British Columbia. Each year, in 2010, Coast handed out 48 uh, educational awards, 32 of them called citizenship awards of $2,000 each and 16 uh, $5,000 awards called Standing Tall. The Citizenship Awards include individuals who are taking a leadership role in their communities while successfully balancing their academic and personal lives. The Standing Tall Awards uh, recognize individuals who are working hard to overcome significant personal challenges to achieve their dreams. And this past year, uh, we received over 1,100 applications for these 48 awards and uh, the adjudication process of those uh, uh, applications is intense and it's uh, a project that's undertaken by our staff and primarily on a volunteer basis. An another very successful program at, uh, at Coast is our youth team. Each year uh, we recruit from uh, high schools throughout our trading area, grade 11 and 12 students, 20 of them all together. Uh, they're selected based on, on their skills, and uh, we take them in. We train them to be customer service reps and assign each one to a branch, and they work a full year at a branch on Saturdays, as well as taking part in a number of community programs throughout uh, our trading area. And I should note, you know, that the, the youth team, it, it really has been a, a big success for Coast. These, these uh, youth, when they get through high school, they often carry on with Coast in part-time jobs as they go to university, and, and often they, they stay on with Coast uh, for their careers. So it's been a, a great program and one that we're proud to be able to, to offer out. Uh, moving on, my next uh, topic is uh, plans for expansion, and uh, Tracy's going to talk about this as well, but I, I just thought I would highlight some of the, the numbers here. The, the graph uh, to the left shows uh, the membership for BC credit unions, and if you can see the numbers there, in 2006 there were 1.62 million credit union members in British Columbia. In 2010, uh, there were 1.72 uh, million members in British Columbia. These numbers are compiled by Central One Credit Union. You can, uh, if you do the math there, the, the system in, in British Columbia has grown by 104,000 members over five years. At, at Coast, if you take, and that includes Coast numbers, if you take Coast numbers out of the, the system numbers, you can see in 2006, Coast had 360,000 members, and we currently, at the close of 2010, have 454,000. So of the 104,000 members that uh, the system has grown over the past uh, uh, five years, 94,000 are Coast members. And another interesting statistic as well, too, if you look at the average age of, of us in the system as members, in 2005, the average age for, of all British Columbia credit union members was 51 years old. It is now, in 2010, 53.7 years old. In other words, the system is aging. At Coast, though, it, in 2005, our average age of a member was 47 years old. Now, in uh, 2010, the average age of a Coast member is 46 years old. 
So I think that speaks to the success that we've had in attracting uh, younger people uh, to Coast. And we see the younger people as, as the future. Coast, uh, our, our heritage credit unions recognized a number of years ago that by bringing our credit unions together, we could expand our branch networks to lower our cost base, as well as offering enhanced products and services. As we look uh, to the future, we see a number of options. Last year, the federal government approved uh, federal credit union legislation. The regulations are still in progress. Uh, as, as the regulations become known to us, we will have a dialogue with our members to uh, see whether that this is an option that we ought to pursue and one that makes sense for our employees and for our members and for, for Coast Capital itself. So there'll be more on that later. We don't believe that Canada needs another national bank, but we do believe Canadians need what we see as a national choice, and a federal credit union can provide that option. As we look at, uh, at expansion, uh, we, we have a, a number of principles that we'll adhere to. Uh, Tracy will, will talk about those in her presentation, but, but, but first and foremost is opportunities for our employees and services for our, our members. Uh, moving on now to looking beyond the numbers, there's a picture of one of Canada's most successful CEOs, our CEO. And uh, Tracy's been recognized uh, again in, in, in 2010. She was recognized as one of the uh, Canada's most powerful women by uh, the top 100 uh, uh, Women's Executive Network. And she was also recognized as one of BC's most influential women in 2011. You'll be hearing from Tracy shortly. Uh, moving on, uh, other members of the senior team include our CFO, Don Coulter. Uh, he holds a degree in mathematics and economics from the University of Toronto. He's a member of the Canadian Institute of Chartered Accountants. And we're, we're, we give Don a lot of credit for our, our 50 Best Managed Companies Award. Coast holds a, a platinum member status and recognize the, the number of years that we've been able to uh, qualify as one of Canada's 50 Best Managed Companies. And that's uh, an, uh, a designation that's sponsored by, by Deloitte's and by CIBC. Uh, also on the slide is Lisa Skaken, our general counsel. Uh, Lisa is being recognized next week, I believe it is, uh, with uh, a PEAK Award, uh, Association of Women in Finance PEAK, and she's going to receive the Rising Star Award. Uh, next slide, we have uh, a newspaper clipping, and uh, the gentleman there is Philip Sarfati. He's our chief risk officer. I think that uh, Philippe is, is the first uh, fully qualified chief risk officer in the, in the Canadian credit union system. This recent article in the Globe and Mail, it, it talks about uh, uh, Philippe and, and his risk management activities, in particular at Coast Capital Savings, but the, the headline is, is, I think, says it well. It's hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and uh, be prepared for anything. Philippe has done a great job in, in moving Coast forward in the risk management area. Uh, Sheila Baker, Sheila's a, a long-term term employee of Coast. Uh, I happen to know that she started as a teller, and she's now, a and she has been a senior executive for a number of years. But she's our chief technology office uh, officer and, and services officer. And uh, a, a picture of, of Coast's new chip card is, is below hers, and they're being rolled out uh, right now. The purpose of which is to uh, reduce fraud. So that's one of the many projects that Sheila is, is leading at Coast. Uh, Kathy McGarkle is our Chief Operating Officer. She's, uh, Kathy has recently been nominated for the YWCA Women of Distinction Award, recognizing her community involvement. Also there is uh, Lori Ferguson, who is our Chief Marketing and Public Relations Officer. Uh, we recently rolled out our new You're the Boss mortgage. You may have seen our TV ads. Uh, this product has, has been recognized by the Canadian Mortgage Trends uh, and has won the award as the Mortgage of the Year. Uh, next is uh, our, our Chief uh, Human, Rela Human Relations uh, Officer, uh, JN40, and 72.43. That's, that's a good number. And what that number is, is, her employee, is, is our Coast Employee Engagement Score. And that number is up from 71.25% last year. And this recognizes uh, our Coast uh, staff's strong connection to our values. And it, it also rec uh, recognizes the fact that uh, staff uh, recommend Coast to others as a great place to work. 
To Jan's right is uh, Wayne Berg. He's our new commercial credit officer. Uh, there's nothing on his photograph, and that's because he's, he's relatively new to Coast. And uh, he's been hired, and his responsibility is to build a larger uh, commercial financial services business at Coast. We, we recognize that uh, successful commercial enterprises are really growth engines in every community. So Wayne is uh, with Coast, and he will be advancing that. I don't know if you've been keeping track of the gender count here, but uh, if you have, you may have noticed that uh, six out of our nine senior executives are women. Uh, there's an organization called Catalyst Canada, and this year they surveyed all of the large companies across the country. It was published in the Financial Post, 500 companies, and at the very top of that list was Coast Capital Savings. So I think that's quite an accomplishment. And, uh, when they talk about a glass ceiling, they're not talking about Coast Capital Savings. Ladies and gentlemen, that uh, concludes my report. Uh, I would just uh, like to, in conclusion, though, thank you, our members who, uh, whose uh, support of Coast makes it all possible, our employees who uh, come to work every day and, and do what they do very well, uh, my board colleagues. Uh, uh, we have a, a couple of retiring directors who I'll speak about in a moment or towards the end of the agenda, and uh, Tracy and, uh, and her team. So with that, I want to uh, now ask uh, our CEO to come forward and uh, provide her report. Tracy. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much, Bill, for those uh, wonderful kudos to our executive team. I'm uh, very proud of our team's accomplishments uh, this year. Uh, it really has been a terrific year for Coast Capital Savings. Uh, but before I, I do start talking about our financial performance, I really would uh, like to echo Bill's comments and thanking uh, so many people for coming out tonight. Uh, some of our members have come from uh, far distances, Sydney and Victoria, and I just uh, really appreciate that, that type of uh, dedication to the credit union when, when people make uh, the journey to come and join us here. Um, I do encourage uh, all of our members, too, to, to uh, share your feedback with us. Uh, having an open dialogue with our members is really important to our success going forward, and it's been part of our success in the past. So please do not hesitate to uh, share any um, uh, concerns, issues, uh, suggestions uh, going forward, because we are here uh, to serve you. Um, tonight, uh, as Bill is saying, we do have our full executive team. Uh, they're wearing yellow boutonnieres. If I could get the executive team just to stand so people can kind of see you. They've seen your, your pretty faces up on the, uh, on the um, screen up there, but I just uh, wanted to, uh, you to see. Uh, these folks are here tonight, to, again, to answer any questions. Uh, they're a lot smarter than I am, so uh, start with them first, but, uh, and I'm sure you'll find that they'll be able to answer uh, anything that, uh, any uh, questions that you have. So um, just turning now to our numbers, um, well, uh, as you perhaps have seen from our announcement, uh, we had a record year in 2010, and we're, we're very proud of what uh, we were able to accomplish in what was still a fairly challenging economic environment. Uh, Pre-tax earnings rose 43% uh, from 60.8 million to 86.9 million due to uh, strong growth in our residential mortgage uh, book, uh, gradual increases in the prime rate, and good expense control. Uh, net income increased by more than 20% uh, from 54.3 million to 65.4 million in 2010. And net income expressed as a percentage of average assets increased to 0.63% compared to 0.53% last year. Most importantly, we continue to grow our personal customer base through 2010, with membership increasing by 29,000. And as Bill was saying, this, this type of growth, uh, again, for uh, uh, an organization uh, of our footprint is, is uh, very, very strong. Uh, the strategy of our free checking account and attracting personal customers with deposits has been a very good strategy for Coast not only giving us sizable membership growth, but also attracting uh, relatively inexpensive deposit funding. And so given our, our continued strong growth in deposits, in 2010, we took the opportunity to repay some larger institutional deposits and borrowings that we had built up 
uh, as, a, as a cushion against the financial recession uh, of 2008. Uh, this did result in a decline in our overall assets from 11.1 billion to 10.4 billion. But the most important number is the uh, earning assets in the form of loans uh, to our members. That went up by 200 million to 8.4 billion in 2010. As a result of our strong earnings, uh, members' equity increased to almost 596 million, fr up from 543 million in 20, uh, 2009. And total assets under administration uh, declined somewhat from 12.9 billion to 12.3 billion, again, as a result of us repaying that institutional deposit money. Now, our financial position remains very healthy, uh, with a regulatory capital of 14.3%, uh, up from 12.4% last year. And these are very, very good numbers in the financial services industry, I can, I can tell you. Our liquidity ratio declined from 26.4% to 19.8%, but is still very strong. And again, the liquidity uh, reduced because we, re we uh, repaid the institutional deposits. Um, we also uh, grew our mortgage uh, book very substantially in 2010. Uh, we grew by almost half a billion in mortgages, so that was uh, wonderful, taking advantage of all the uh, growth here in Surrey and uh, in uh, uh, other parts uh, of where we have our branches. Um, and now, as revenue growth exceeded expense growth, uh, our operating efficiency, and something that we're very uh, pleased uh, to, to say improve to 69.5% uh, compared to 72.4% in, in 2010. Now you can read more about our financial performance in our annual report, uh, which is available for you to take home tonight. Uh, at Coast, we're all about making things simple, and uh, that includes reading about it. If you've never read an annual report before, uh, you can actually read our, uh, our report and, uh, and, uh, uh, and I think uh, for most part understand it. Financial services is complicated, but uh, we've tried to make our annual report as easy to understand as, as possible. And it's also available online. Uh, and you can also hear me chat uh, about our performance in a short video in our website if you would like to take a look at that. Now, it's great to have strong performance, but it's even better if you take your success and use it to make life easier for your members. Coast Capital strongly believes in our purpose to change the way Canadians feel about banking forever. This purpose drives the many ways we offer simple, simple financial help to our members. And increased profitability, uh, importantly, allows us to invest more in our communities, as Bill was talking about, something that is very much core to our history and our culture at Coast. Uh, most of you have heard that we've given, uh, we give 7% of our budgeted pre-tax uh, uh, income to uh, the communities that we operate in, and that amounted to 4.6 million in uh, 2010. Um, I won't talk about all of the, uh, the programs. Uh, Bill uh, mentioned a couple of uh, signature programs that uh, we were involved in, but I, I guess I want to uh, underline just how important this giving back to the community is to uh, all of our staff at Coast. It really is a part of our DNA and a fundamental uh, part of our uh, organization. It's also something that sets us apart from the major banks. Uh, typically, the major Canadian banks uh, only uh, give 1% to 2% of their pre-tax earnings in charitable giving. So the fact that we do 7% is, uh, is, uh, is, is quite significant. Now, as I mentioned, our 2010 performance included strong membership growth, and we now have over 454,000 members. Uh, equally important is that our member satisfaction continues to remain very high at 82%. But what is particularly rewarding uh, for uh, us is that in 2010, we did a survey uh, of our COAST members, and it revealed that COAST members are twice as more likely as other BC financial institution to recommend Coast, uh, their financial institution, to their friends and family. And that is really, really great, uh, great numbers. Uh, and uh, and uh, our job is to continue to make sure that that's, uh, that continues that way. So you could say that we have a lot of good vibes amongst our uh, members. 
Now, Bill talked to her about our new You're the Boss mortgage uh, that was launched in November, and it's doing exceptionally well. It's another example of our continuing product innovation for our members, and I'd like to show you one of our latest commercials that you may have seen. We can't decide on a mortgage. Well, we have one that lets you choose a fixed rate, a variable, or our half and half rate, which gives you the best of both worlds. It's our You're the Boss mortgage. You hear that? We're the boss. Yeah. Oh, look warm. Oh. Ow. Okay. Okay. You're the boss. Yeah. He's the boss. Sorry, I had to see that. It's okay. The You're the Boss mortgage with the half and half rate from Coast Capital Savings. What I can tell you is that uh, that baby um, uh, was, uh, we didn't have to do any uh, doctoring to the commercial. Uh, the baby uh, laughed because we had a, um, there, he had a soother in his mouth and we had a little string attached to it and we kept pulling the string and of course the baby thought this was a great game so that we, that's why we got that natural uh, laughter. So uh, we're getting a lot of uh, great play ab about this uh, commercial and I suspect you know, we might win a few awards about that with, about this, with this commercial next, th in the coming year. So going back to the You're the Boss mortgage, again, this is a very uh, innovative, unique uh, product that uh, we believe stands out in the market. Um, it's been recognized uh, by industry experts as being highly innovative and a very helpful product uh, for customers. And clearly British Columbians agree because this product is driving significant growth for Coast. Um, by year end, and we launched the product in November, we'd already exceeded our, our targets for year end by 250%. And over the course of the past four months, we've sold more than 1,500 You're the Boss mortgages, totaling over $370 million. So that is uh, wonderful. Um, what is also wonderful about this is that more than half of these sales are new, uh, is new business to Coast. It's either new customers who hadn't banked with Coast Capital before or existing customers who hadn't held a mortgage with us. So not only are we driving uh, new customers through the door with our free checking account, we are now driving new customers through the door with our You're the Boss mortgage. And this really is a game-changing product that gives our members choice in how they manage their mortgage. It also, importantly, in, in an environment where, uh, you know, you see in the press all the time about uh, Canadian debt loads, uh, this mortgage is designed to help members pay down their mortgage and their debt faster, while at the same uh, time allowing them to access that equity very easily if they, a life event happens. So it's, it is one of Canada's most flexible mortgage products, and it's the reason why we have so many customers flocking to Coast. In terms of our other business lines, we've also made some good progress, although I believe that there's more that we can do in improving the take-up of our very competitive wealth management and insurance products with our members, and this is a strong focus uh, for us going forward. Uh, in 2010, investment services revenue grew to just under 13 million from 11.7 million in 2009, an increase of over 10 percent. Uh, revenue from Coast Capital Insurance Services rose to 23 million compared to 21.7 million in 2009, an increase of 6.5%. Uh, equipment financing uh, lease receivables were stable at about 176 million, up slightly from 2009. Uh, our commercial loans totaled 1.5%. 9 billion compared to 2.3 billion the previous year. Uh, this is the uh, only area where we've had uh, some decline and in part this is due to the ongoing um, challenges with the economic environment as real estate uh, loans were, were, uh, were repaid and, um, and there wasn't as much new construction financing activity during the recession. But it was also a deliberate attempt on our part to uh, lower um, uh, some uh, loans that we had in, in uh, unde undeveloped land loans that uh, we felt were uh, a bit too high risk uh, in the uh, current environment. Um, we are now in rebuild mode with our commercial banking portfolio, and which is one of the reasons why we've hired uh, Wayne Berg uh, over in there. Um, so if you have any uh, commercial uh, business, please go and talk to Wayne. Uh, he has a tremendous amount of experience uh, in commercial banking in Western Canada, and he's already making solid headway as the economy turns back. So I'm very hopeful that you'll see some good numbers uh, next year. Uh, now, over the years at the AGM, we've talked to you about our desire to continue to expand Coast Capital, 
But first and foremost, um, you know, wh why would we want to uh, continue to expand? And I think that's an important question uh, for us to answer. Um, there, there are a couple of reasons. First, um, we want to make sure uh, that we're meeting member needs and we're also remaining relevant to our members. And the second reason is to continue to be able to compete with the uh, Canadian banks who are some of the best uh, retail banks in the world and, and uh, uh, often make our lives quite difficult sometimes. But in order to remain relevant, we must be able to continue to attract and retain our members by providing the unique products and services that are integral to helping them reach their financial goals. And we must do that with an increasing array of uh, convenient channels to allow our members to bank whenever they want. Uh, all of this uh, is, is quite costly and it takes uh, sustained growth in earnings uh, to continually combat rising costs annually. Um, in addition to the aggressive uh, competition that we've seen from the major banks, uh, we've also seen the entrance of new uh, financial services providers like Walmart, uh, Canadian Tire and Ally, just to name a few over the last few years. And this competition, whilst it's, it's good for consumers, it, it does continue to put uh, pressure on average interest rate uh, margins. To put that a little bit in context, what it means um, is that at today's margins, we typically have to generate about 42 million in loans uh, to pay for a million dollar branch, which is about the average cost uh, of a branch uh, to in today's environment. So it's critical that we're able to continue to grow our business at a pace that allows us to perform well against the very successful large banks. But what is also critical is that whatever path we choose, uh, to, to continue to grow, that that path makes sense to our members and it aligns with COAST growth principles. Now credit unions were founded on the principle of being member-owned, community-focused financial institutions. Uh, they were created to serve unmet needs in financial services and are known for their innovation in the Canadian marketplace as a result. So any growth strategy that we pursue has to be rooted in this tradition and it must bring positive benefits for our valued members and our employees. So growth needs to create a greater, greater value for customers and opportunities and experiences for our employees. That's one of the principles that we uh, must uh, pursue. The growth also must align with our purpose, our mission, our values and our brand. Uh, it has to build on core business strengths and be consistent with our risk appetite. It has to be achievable and service the long-term health of the balance sheet. And one of the things that is very important to us is that it allows us to continue to build our community presence. So we have many options available to us uh, for expansion, which includes expansion here in BC, uh, as well as uh, potentially outside the province. Uh, we currently have 50 branches in the Metro Vancouver, Fraser Valley and Vancouver Island regions. Our plan is to continue to infill in some areas in the Lower Mainland that we are not adequately represented in. Uh, we are also looking at areas in the interior of BC where we have a significant amount of business but we actually don't have a branch. So we already have customers up there who I think uh, would value uh, our proposition. Now one of the most interesting potential options for growth outside the province lies with becoming a federal credit union. And as Bill noted, the legislation to enable credit unions to expand nationally was approved last July. Uh, but the specific regulations are still being worked on and this is a very uh, complex area. Uh, we probably will not see um, the uh, specifics around those regulations until the latter part of this year. Now we were, uh, along with a number of other credit unions, a proponent of this legislation because we believe credit unions offer great value and service and that they should be able to expand nationally to bring that value proposition to all Canadians. In a number of countries around the world, uh, you have uh, federal uh, credit unions. Uh, so Canada is a little bit unique in that the credit unions uh, are uh, provincially uh, regulated. The important point here though is that we believe we can still grow uh, but continue to maintain a strong community banking approach where members are known by their local branch manager and they're not a number. That's really important to us. We're also very proud of what we've been able to achieve at Coast with the support of, uh, of our members. In five short years we've added uh, nearly 100,000 new members and we've created these groundbreaking products and services that are currently enjoyed by today only British Columbians. 
Uh, we believe that other markets in Canada would welcome and be well served, frankly, by COAST offering. There's only two financial institutions in Canada that offer free checking, ourselves and a uh, small credit union in Ontario. Uh, most Canadians uh, uh, cannot get free checking from their uh, financial institution. Expansion, uh, again, would help us remain strong and uh, continue to be able to provide the relevant products and services to our members. But again, what I would like to say, too, is that this is a long, complex road. It's not something that happens overnight. There's a lot of considerations that need to be taken. And most importantly, we need to consult with our members about what this means to them and what issues or concerns that they have. So I will commit to you tonight that we will continue to keep our members and staff uh, informed every step of the way, and it will only be undertaken if we believe uh, it's in the best interests of our members and employees and our, our, our organization. So to that end, um, again, membership, membership consultation is key. Uh, we do want to hear from you. Uh, what do you see uh, as the opportunities expansion brings for you as a member and what concerns you? And it's very integral that we have your input and feedback so that we can ensure it is captured uh, in our plans. And later this fall, we'll be announcing member consultation sessions and hope that you will be able to participate and share your thoughts on expansion. And I'd just like to talk a little bit more about our strategy. Our purpose, as you uh, have heard, is to change the way Canadians feel about banking forever. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, we believe we can do it by offering simple financial help and by challenging what we consider, what we call the orthodoxies of banking to ensure that you walk away with a wow experience every time you interact with Coast Capital Savings. We don't want to be like the TD. We don't want to be like the Royal. We want to provide a, a differentiated customer experience that uh, is, uh, is, is meaningful to uh, our members. And, and, and again, uh, the difference being is that what we're trying to do is, is achieve simple financial help uh, and, and, and differentiate ourselves from the major Canadian banks where, uh, where financial help is often co complex, uh, frustrating, and not very enjoyable. So our uh, three-year strategy is to, to, uh, to um, uh, change the way Canadians feel about banking forever, and it includes applying simple financial help across all of our products, policies, and procedures so that we can get, deliver most of our retail banking products in under 30 minutes. Uh, we also will be building out our small business and business banking services to make sure that we are a leader in this area similar to what we've done with our personal uh, retail uh, services. We'll also be spending um, a lot of time with our branch managers, developing them into customer and community champions to ensure, again, that we have a customer and community experience second to none. It's very much about community banking. And again, as part of that, we will continue to uh, focus on being strong community builders, uh, leveraging this part of our DNA, and uh, with, uh, with, the, with the right um, uh, input from members, uh, we will undertake uh, targeted geographic expansion in and outside of BC, uh, consistent with our growth principles. So finally, just uh, uh, in, in, in summary, our, our members are very important to us, and uh, I want to, again, just uh, uh, speak to some of our promises to you. Uh, we promise to continue to offer value-based, innovative products to help you with your financial plans. Uh, we want to continue to build out our brand awareness and reputation as a top financial institution. We want to continue to strengthen our community presence, and we want to consult with you on our growth and expansion plans. Now, looking ahead, uh, the economic outlook for Canada shows modest growth, and this can be attributed to uh, many global factors affecting Canada's growth, whether it's the ongoing challenges in the U.S. and Europe, uh, the tensions in the Middle East, or the long road to recovery uh, for Japan after one of the world's most uh, terrible natural disasters this year. But I do want to assure you that Coast Capital is very strong. We're very well positioned for the future. We have more than $12 billion in assets under administration, uh, more than 450,000 members doing business with us. We've had some of the highest growth in membership in the credit union industry and are one of the fastest growing financial institutions in Canada on that basis. 
We have great products, great service, great brand, and above all, great staff. And I've been in this industry for more than 20 years, uh, and I can tell you that our employees are truly the secret sauce of what makes our organization different. And so with all of this, I believe we're very well prepared to handle the challenges uh, uh, of 2011 and beyond and to continue to grow this credit union very, very successfully. Now, before I finish, I, do, I would be remiss in not acknowledging the many people who have worked uh, tirelessly to deliver our excellent results in 2010. I'm very grateful to our board of directors for their support and to my executive team uh, for their leadership and expertise. It is a pleasure and a great privilege to work with you uh, every day uh, on behalf of uh, our members. And I also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of our employees who are out there wowing our customers every day. I never fail to be amazed by their commitment to our organization uh, and commitment to our members to do the best for them. And finally, uh, to our members, I would like to thank you for your confidence in choosing Coast Capital as your financial institution and for helping us grow and achieve our goals. You are the reason why we're here and you are the reason why we do what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. I have the uh, total registered members in attendance tonight. As we mentioned, we have 454,000 members. They're not all here. <laughs> we have a total of 101 people here tonight. 91 are registered members and 10 guests. So I'll move on to agenda item number 10, the receipt of the 2010 auditor's report and uh, our financial results. Uh, and the annual report uh, started at page 24 is uh, the uh, financial st or are the financial statements. Uh, on page 25, I believe, is uh, KPMG's auditor's report, and in their report they provide their opinion that uh, the consolidated financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of Coast Capital Savings Credit Union as at December 31st, 2010, and the results of its operations and cash flows for the year that ended. Uh, Tracy has provided you with the, uh, the highlights of uh, 2010. The annual report includes the management discussion and analysis, which uh, provides additional information on the financials. Uh, as required by uh, legislation, the board has approved the financial statements on your behalf. And I will just ask you now if there are any questions on the, uh, the financial statements. Hearing none, then, I declare the financial statements received. And I'll move to agenda item number 11 which is a motion to appoint the auditor for the ensuing year. And it is uh, your board's recommendation that the firm of KPMG be appointed auditors for 2011 and that their remuneration be set by the board. May I have a motion to appoint KPMG auditors for 2011, please? Uh, seconder, please. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Any? Nobody's opposed? Done, thanks. Uh, agenda item number 12 is the report of the Nominations Committee on the Election of Directors. I'll now like to ask uh, the Chairman of the uh, Nominations Committee to come forward and provide his report to the members. Uh, Glenn Wong, please. Before I get started, I wanted to give you all a chance just to stand up and take a stretch. So for five seconds, if you want to just stand up, Get some blood in your legs, and then I'll go through this with you all. It's optional. You don't have to stand. We're not singing the service. Okay. That's your time. No cell phones. Good. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and good evening, everyone. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the Nominations Committee to report the 2011 direction, director's election. Uh, this year, I chaired the committee, which also included your board chair, Bill Wilburn, and uh, my fellow director, Christian Findlay. Now, a highly engaged board of directors with the right balance of skills and experience is a cornerstone of effective governance. Collectively, directors must have the required skills and experience to effectively carry out the board's oversight responsibilities on behalf of the membership. We must protect the credit union's assets, and work with management to, pri to provide input to and to prove Coast Capital's strategic plan and process. 
Now, in order to achieve these expectations, a nominations committee is appointed annually. This committee reports directly to members and is comprised of directors who are not currently eligible for re-election to ensure our independence. Using the annual nominations process as an opportunity to strengthen the board, the nominations committee evaluates the board's current members and identifies the additional skills, business experience and qualifications needed to assist Coast Capital Savings in achieving its long-term strategic goals. This evaluation is completed with expert advice from an independent governance consultant to ensure a fair process for the nominees, the members and the needs of the credit union. As part of the process, an ideal candidate description is developed. It sets out the attributes needed to further strengthen the board going forward. This information is shared with all Coast Capital Savings members in the annual Call for Nominations for Qualified Candidates brochure, which is mailed in the fall and posted on our website. In addition, the Nominations Committee, through the Governance Consultant, actively recruits qualified candidates. These potential candidates are measured against the specific skills and business experience identified in the ideal candidate description. We carefully review each nomination application received in detail. After an extensive seven month process involving interviews, analysis of past work experience, community contributions and detailed reference checks, we recommend individuals who can offer significant skills and expertise that will be required by the Coast Capital Savings Board for continued success. This year, again considering the incumbent director's collective skills and looking at the future of our credit union, the committee's analysis determined that executive leadership experience in national or North American retail organizations, demonstration of, success, of successful strategic innovation, rapid growth and expansion, and experience leading transformational change are the skills required to further strengthen the board of directors. We made walking on water optional. From year to year, we expect the skills required to enhance the board of directors will vary in response to the changing needs of the credit union and the skills currently available on the board. This year, we made some improvements to the director's election process based on member feedback. We streamlined the balloting process to make it faster and simpler for voters to complete their ballot. We moved to a barcode system where every eligible member voter was issued a random barcode. Other credit unions and public companies use a barcoded ballot for their votes. This barcode was then used to, va to validate the ballots electronically rather than have the voters provide all their personal uh, information for manual verification. This change enabled us to address members' concerns about personal information being sent through the mail. Another change was our offer to move to offer members online voting through online banking. We are the first credit union in Canada to implement this technology, which was developed by Central One. More and more businesses with a large member base are moving towards online voting to provide members with another option to exercise their right to vote. There are many benefits to online voting. It offers convenience and access to another option for voting. It saves money and a few trees by reducing business reply postage. It provides opportunities to increase voter turnout and it saves time in reporting the results. It eliminates the time consuming task of mailing, counting and verifying paper ballots. It eliminates geographic boundaries and is more convenient for members uh, to vote if they are away from home. And it provides an opportunity for us to reach younger members in a format that they may be more comfortable with. Online voting is safe and secure and it's easy to do. Feedback from staff and members has been extremely positive. We hope that you enjoyed online voting through Coast Online Banking as another one of Coast's first in Canada by any credit union. We also encourage members to vote by introducing a charity element to our election. Coast Capital pledged to donate a dollar for every valid vote received during the election up to a maximum of $20,000. And this would be equally shared by the Boys and Girls Clubs of South Coast BC and the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Victoria. 
These two charities were selected as their organizations align with our new community leadership strategy, which you heard our board chair talk about earlier this evening. And we'll have more about the donations in a few minutes. But this just shows that we can use our democratic voting process as yet another opportunity for close capital savings to support the communities we have the privilege of serving. This year, we have three directors' terms expiring at the conclusion of tonight's AGM. Mary Jordan, Gail Stevens, and Doug Stone, resulting in three vacant positions on the board. Directors Gail Stevens and Doug Stone advised that they would not run for re-election, and they left big shoes for the nominations committee to fill, as they have each been a very valuable part of Coast's success. And on behalf of the entire board, I want to thank them for their guidance and dedication and wish them all the best. During the Seeking Qualified Candidates process, 23 members asked for applications. 15 members attended the mandatory information session held in November, and 14 applications were officially submitted. So we didn't scare them all off. A total of six candidates let their names stand for the 2011 director's election, three of whom were recommended by the committee. The nominations committee's goal was to recommend candidates it believes can provide significant expertise and are most qualified to fill the three upcoming position on your board of directors. While many candidates offer excellent skills, if those skills do not align with the current year's needs, the candidate will not be recommended by the committee. However, we do maintain a database of all interested potential candidates as a source for future year's vacancies. And I want to thank all the applicants and all the candidates for going through a six-month process with lots of forms to fill out, interviews and phone calls. And we appreciate your commitment to ensuring Coast has the strongest board possible. We recognize that it is impossible for every voting member to undertake the same rigorous review on their own. The nominations committee's work is meant to assist members in making an informed voting decision. The practice in the credit union system of identifying the skills gaps on boards, profiling the needed attributes and expertise of directors, and recommending candidates standing for election is growing. It is also recognized by the Canadian Cooperative Association as a best practice in good corporate governance. How you vote is clearly your decision. The information the committee provides is only meant to help you make an informed decision. All members of the credit union receive the information about candidate recruitment by mail in October. Interested members were provided with information packages and an opportunity to attend a mandatory information session. The director's election was conducted from March 15th to April 11, 2011, in accordance with our credit union rules. Each year, the nominations committee appoints an outside expert, independent of the credit union, to serve as the returning officer to oversee the election process. Jerry Della Mattia has extensive experience in training as a senior electoral officer in federal and provincial elections, and he served again as our returning officer. I am pleased to report that in this year's election, 19,457 ballots were cast in total, a record number of ballots received for a director's election. And I'd like to thank the members for participating in this important process. Now, of the 19,457 ballots cast, as you can see, 1,076 were spoiled and 91 were rejected, resulting in 18,290 valid ballots for the election. And just to remind everyone, a spoiled ballot is defined as any ballot on which the member voted for too few or too many candidates. A ballot was, reject was rejected if it was not possible to complete the required verification criteria. The individual results for each candidate are as follows. Mary Jordan, 14,633 votes. Robin Chakrabarty, 13,474. Susan Senecal, 12,344. William Lowe, 5,427, Elizabeth Woods, 5,109, and Keith Lacroix, 3,883. The committee declares Mary Jordan, Robin Chakrabarty, and Susan Senecal elected to the Board of Directors for a three-year term. Thank you to all the candidates who let their names stand in this year's election. In closing, I would like to thank the members of the nominations committee. 
Bill Welburn and Christian Finley. Their thoughtful contributions, patience, determination, and vision for Coast Capital in making critical decisions help support good governance for our credit union. It was a lot of meetings, emails, and phone calls over an eight-month marathon, and I'm so happy to have had the privilege of working with both of you. We look forward to answering any questions or hearing any comments you might have during the members' open forum later in the agenda. Now, I'd like to ask uh, Christian and Bill to join me at this point, and I'd like to call upon the representatives from the Boys and Girls Clubs to come up here to present our donation to them. We have Carolyn Tuckwell, who's the president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of South Coast, BC, and Patty Sullivan, who's the executive director from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Victoria. Now, while we received only 18,290 votes, uh, just short of our maximum of uh, $20,000 in total, uh, we will be donating the full $20,000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs, and we're happy to provide that full amount. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I said six o'clock, so we're running a bit late. I'm reminded we started late. Uh, thanks, Glenn. Um, before I, I go to uh, members' resolutions and new business, are there any questions coming uh, from the uh, audience on the reports of the board? Uh, the report of the CEO or the report of the Nominations Committee. We'll move on then to uh, agenda item number 13, Members' Resolutions and New Business. Uh, to ensure members receive adequate notice of matters to be considered at uh, an annual general meeting, our rules require that uh, an ordinary resolution must uh, come forward to the board at least 90 days prior to the uh, AGM and the board at its discretion shall deter determine whether the resolution shall be submitted to the members for consideration. Notice of this deadline was published in the annual call for candidates mailed to members in October and November 2010. No resolutions were received from the members by the published deadline of January the 5th, 2011. I'd now like to call for any other new business. Okay, we'll move to agenda item number 14, and that is the uh, closing remarks and conclusion of the meeting. Again, uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, members. Thank you, employees and, and Tracy and team. Uh, we have two retiring directors, uh, Gail Stevens. Unfortunately, Gail can't be with us tonight. Well, it's kind of fortunate for her because I think she's in Maui. <laughs> but I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you very much to, to Gail. She brought uh, a very uh, high level of CEO experience to the board. She when, when we recruited her for the board, she was CEO of BC Pension Corp in Victoria. She was then um, moved to, recruited to be the Chief Operating Officer at the University of Calgary, so she commuted from Calgary to, to Surrey for our meetings. And then, uh, I guess about a year and a half ago, she was recruited as City Manager of City of Victoria, so as a senior municipal official, she has a, a very, very busy life. Uh, the financial expertise that she, uh, she brought to the board was, was also deeply appreciated. Our other retiring director uh, and long-serving director from 1994 to 2011, which is just about half his life, Doug Stone. Doug is a, a great friend. He brought uh, a, a tremendous amount of HR expertise and people knowledge to the board, and it's really all about people. Doug can figure things out really quickly. He, he's gifted with, uh, with common sense, and uh, he's, he's going to be deeply missed on the board. So, Doug, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the conclusion of the formal part of the meeting. Uh, the members' open forum will follow, and you're welcome to stay. Uh, so before we move to that, may I have a, a motion to uh, adjourn the formal part of the AGM, please? Seconder? Discussion? All in favor? 
Opposed? Any motions carried? And before we uh, start the members' open forum, a couple of things. Um, if you're leaving now, directors and staff will not be available if you wish to uh, ask questions of them privately. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will be available, though, at the conclusion of the, uh, of the members' open forum. And uh, you note that we're color-coded, red for directors, um, yellow for, uh, for uh, executives. And that includes the guys, too. I see our CRO's got a, a, a yellow boutonniere. Philippe, you look good with that. <laughs> and uh, I think we've got recycle stations on the, on the outside, or as you leave the meeting, if you wish to leave behind anything. So that uh, takes us now to our members' open forum, and uh, as is the custom, we'll alternate between uh, questions here in the room and our webcast uh, participants. And we will also continue with the same rules of order that uh, we adopted earlier, which is uh, uh, three minutes if you wish to make a comment or ask a question. So we have uh, two gentlemen in the aisles with microphones. Uh, if you wish to, uh, to ad address the meeting, uh, please approach one of them, and he and he will uh, uh, amplify your voice so we can all hear you. So uh, sure. we, we require a name and branch affiliation, please. Hi, my name is Suk Hare. I'm a certified general accountant, and I am a member with the Scott Road branch. 450,000 members, 90 members here, and probably 10 of us who aren't employees or board of directors. With the crowd being so strongly employees, I hope they will give me the courtesy of hearing me out and just listening to what I have to say without being too, uh, too cruel or mean. I'm sorry if my speech is a bit messed up because I had a longer speech, but they've told me I only have three minutes. I was hoping they would give me a little extra time considering I'm trying to represent, I think, the 449,900 members that aren't here today. Um, but I'll be quick as I can. My first question is, are you using the services of Fleshman Hilliard? The reason I ask is that Fleshman Hilliard and the credit unions, like Coast Capital, are the only ones that ever seem to visit my humble Share the Wealth blog. Fleshman Hilliard's website states, when a crisis hits, organizations turn to Fleshman Hilliard. Is my asking questions of senior management now considered a crisis, or is this just a coincidence? Now, I hope you don't mind if I just continue with all my questions, and if you want, you can answer them at the end, but I want to just get in as many points on record as I can before my time runs out. Senior management has been very successful in bringing down total compensation costs, but this has been done by switching frontline staff to defined contribution pension plans and away from defined benefit plans. This was sold to employees as a positive because very few people work with the credit union until retirement. And this sounds logical enough. What, what type do senior management, old and new, choose to negotiate? Do they choose to instead go with a defined benefit plan and why the discrepancy. The chairman of the board tells us that he and the board have negotiated sal salaries with senior executive which take into account the fact that they are providing leadership for a 12 billion dollar company. But the reality is it is easier to succeed as a 12 billion dollar entity than it is a 2 billion dollar entity. At least that was the rationale they gave the owners of Pat Coast, Richmond Savings and Surrey Metro for the need to merge 10 years ago. How many $10 billion companies are there in Canada where not a single shareholder is allowed to know what the company they own is paying their top executives? Sorry, I gotta flip here. Is there anything that the owners of this credit union can do to have the executive compensation made public? What would it take? What are the hurdles? I believe senior management, and I'm switching to retained earnings a bit here, I believe that senior management does not see retained earnings as belonging to anyone. They see it as a collective, they see it as collective equity, and that is fine. The problem is they feel members have no claim to any of the profits the credit union earns, which they earn off the backs of the owners of the credit union. They see members as the only skin they have in the game is the $5 they invested to become members. I just want to cover secular bear markets. Secular bear markets relate to investing, and bank customers may not, probably, may not properly have the risks of a secular bear market explained to them because it is not good for the bank's bottom line. But for a credit union to not educate its owners in regards to this matter is, to me, unforgivable. 
This is why those who save and invest can feel at times that they never get rich enough to actually go on vacation, while those managing their money seem to have no problem going on one or two exotic vacations every year. And all the vacations you put off or dreamt about taking in your golden years have already been taken by the people that were fortunate enough to have earned a handsome amount off your life savings for helping you manage your money more effectively. People need to get better informed. There's a huge agency problem in the investment world that advisors, who are really commission-based salespeople, never properly, but, but this is never properly explained to the real clients. Sorry. Mr. Herrick, if you could wrap up, please. Okay, let me just finish. I will wrap up with one last statement here. Credit unions should be different from the banks because we, do not, because we do not need to take excessive risks to chase profits in fear of losing market share or falling share prices. Credit unions should be able to choose the bulk, sorry, credit unions should still choose to insure bulk mortgage, or should, insure, sorry, should still choose to bulk insure mortgages as this would be less costly than what we have lost through the way of bad investments in asset-backed commercial paper. For example, what was the dollar amount and what was the percentage of the original amount lost in our investments in asset-backed commercial paper? What percent and what percentage of their bonuses did the senior executives responsible for this type of loss still earn in the years that these losses occurred? Okay, thank you, Mr. Hare. Uh, the, the questions that you've uh, brought forward tonight are, are not uh, new ones with respect. We've received uh, numerous uh, emails, communications from you over the past year, and I, th I believe that we have uh, addressed these questions. I don't think there's anything new here. Uh, you, you raised the issue of, uh, of uh, your blog and the fact that uh, uh, in monitoring who, who's uh, been on your blog, you say Fleischman Hilliard, which is a, a PR firm. You, you've uh, suggested that that's something to do with Coast. It, it has nothing to do with Coast. We have no, uh, no relationship with, with uh, Fleischman Hilliard. And uh, the fact that uh, I believe uh, we have visited your blog at your request, so if, if you've seen Post on your blog. It's because uh, you suggested that we should visit it. So that that there's no link. Um, you ask about executive compensation. Uh, that's an issue that uh, is is uh, before us uh, as we move forward. Uh, there's there's new standards coming out uh, for uh, reporting, and uh, it's something that uh, that we are considering. You you may have noted if you looked at our website recently that we do publish our executive compensation philosophy. And just for clarity, when it comes to executive compensation, uh, it, it's a matter that we take very seriously uh, as a board, and our Human Relations Committee does retain an external consultant, and that consultant reports directly to the committee, not to management, and the committee makes the determinations on senior executive compensation. So the, the, the board that you elect is, uh, is in charge when it comes to senior executive compensation. And to date, we've, we've treated that uh, relationship between the board and our CEO in particular as, as one that uh, is a confidential relationship. We establish the compensation. We are a regulated financial institution. Our regulator is aware of the compensation. So you can rest assured if, if anything was out of line, it would be brought uh, to attention. Uh, the other questions, uh, Mr. Hare, on, on retained earnings and on defined benefit uh, pension plans, I, I, I believe we have uh, responded to. I, 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 I can't uh, comment any, any further because uh, it, it, presently that, that's a confidential matter between uh, the credit union and its employees. So I'll move on. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to uh, uh, speak, please? No, this isn't a debate. Yes, sir. I've, I've been a member for 30 years with Surrey Credit Union and now with the Coast Capital. We what, have what is your name, please, sir? My name? Yes, please. Gustav Sommerfeld. Thank you. I'm very, very disappointed how few people are to a general meeting. As I drove in from Langley, I lived in Surrey, in Cloverdale. Now I live in Langley. It took me an hour almost to get here. Why? Because it's rush hour. 
because of rush hour, people can't get to the meetings. Why cannot we delay it to a later time or other times where people have a chance to come here and attend the meeting? I'm sure half of you are more bank people here. Very, very few. And this is very sad. I've attended other meetings where we had crowded big halls. So this is one consideration. The other one is Robin Charabrati, Mary Jordan, Susan Sensel, Sensical. She is not even listed as a picture on the ba mailing and ballots. All new should be always having a picture on the mailing ballots. Why can't we have it? We have enough paper there to put a small picture in. It's described where they come from and what they are doing. But we'd like to see him as a person. I've seen all the older people in prior meetings. And we always had, most of the time, the pictures of the whole council at times, which is good. We don't have to see him 10 times, but if we see him once at least, are if they elected or to be elected, one recommended here at present would be nice if they could stand up at least and show their faces who they are. I've been in business for 35 years and I retired at an earlier age too, but we can do more for the people and for the membership. Okay, <coughs> so th thanks very much for your comments. Uh, just uh, first of all to, to address the, uh, uh, the number of people attending the AGM. Uh, th this turnout is un unfortunately has become kind of the custom over the, p the past number of years. We have uh, over the, the number of past few years, we we've attempted uh, the meeting later in the evening. We've attempted it in, in mid-afternoon and uh, uh, our polling of, of attendees over this time frame has suggested that uh, a five o'clock start is perhaps most convenient because that's when people are, are usually leaving from, from work to go home. And, and you know, just a, a personal observation, I've over the years have noted that uh, large turnouts at these meetings occur when there's a significant issue. When, when, a, when a merger issue is, is before us, we will have four or 500 people out to, to, to hear from, from the, the board and the CEO. When everything is, uh, is progressing smoothly, uh, the, the turnout uh, tends to be uh, like this. Um, your, your question on, on, on showing pictures of the candidates, uh, that's one that uh, we have uh, considered over the time as well. And uh, the choice that we made was uh, to focus on, uh, on the characteristics and the, the abilities of, of the candidates, let them provide a full narrative that, that details their experience, their education, etc and you make the decision based on what they've accomplished and what they've done. Uh, w however, your, your point is taken, and I'm sure the nominations committee that uh, will be uh, set up uh, soon uh, by the board for the members will, will take your, your comments in, into consideration. Uh, your, your last uh, comment about showing uh, faces of, of the successful candidates, that's a good one. <laughs> They're, they're all, you're all good comments, but the three the successful candidates are, are sitting down here, so I'm going to ask them if they would please stand and turn around and face the audience. And uh, on my right is Mary. <laughs> Mary, Susan, and Robin. <laughs> and I think you will agree they're all lovely faces. Is there anybody else who wishes to, uh, to speak, please? I note uh, uh, the website has been monitored and there's no questions coming in from online, so I believe you've already spoken, sir. So uh, we are past the, uh, the 6.30 time, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Do you want to uh, hear Mr. Hare again or do you want to adjourn? I think I hear nods for the adjourn. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.